guys, uh, I've just cut the plasterboard. Um, it's roughly about 20 mil higher than it needs to be, than it should be, but the trim will cover that. Um, so obviously we'll get the, this framing out, we'll take the horizontal brace out, uh, the verticals out, move the horizontal brace up, get it secured along there, and then we can take the chart the door lining off, move that up uh, to the desired height. Hi hey guys, that's the wardrobe doors fitted. Um, fitted really well actually. Um, our opening was pretty much bang on. Um, the you know the fitting was as simple as one of that new track along the bottom here. New track along the top, and then clicking the doors in. Um, they did need a little bit of adjustment, <clears throat> just down the edges there, you know, just to tilt them uh, to get run square with that edge and this edge. And um, that's just done on the by adjusting the wheels at the bottom. So now they turned out well. If you remember the old wardrobe doors came down to here. And it was quite expensive to replace them because uh, they were non standard size. So the easier option, a cheap well not the easier option, but a cheaper option. Um, was to make the opening bigger and buy standard doors, which are I think it's two two six oh millimeters high, two point two six meters. So Worked out pretty well. Um, that's our extension pieces there, new trim. New trim down here. Excuse the mess on the floor, by the way, but um, there's new carpets getting, these are all getting ripped out. There's new carpets getting fitted throughout this property. So it's another view of the wardrobe doors. I've just spun my camera around so you can get the length, the, the full view. Uh, no, it turned out well. I'm happy with that. Um, I'm sure the client will be as well. So. That's them done. Um, this room just needs fully decorated and obviously carpets taken up and replaced. Uh, I'm, a, I'm not actually doing the carpets in this. There's a specialist company coming in to do the, the carpet, the whole, the whole uh, house. So. Carpeting's just not my thing. Um, I'll try and get a video once it's all carpeted uh, and get a, a video of the actual fully complete renovation. Okay, that's another job off the list. I'm getting down to the painting now. Uh, this is bedroom two. Uh, the way I do things, <coughs> pretty much uh, the woodwork's not been done. So all the ceilings in the, the house have now been done. Uh, so now I go into the walls and then the woodwork. Uh, so. Pretty much this is going to be magnolia. Um, cut in, do all the cutting in first on one wall. I just work on one wall at a time. Make sure the paint's still wet and then roll into the wet paint. Um, so the important thing here is I always use, I don't have any dust sheets <laughs> down for MD comments. Uh, I think all these carpets are getting ripped up. So these are effectively my dust sheets, as you can see from the mess. Um, but the important thing is, uh, my, my dad's been a decorator for 45 years, um, so I've got quite a lot of tips from him over the years. But I always use a sheepskin roller. It's just a nine inch sheepskin roller, and the coverage you get with these is just amazing, you know. Um, so this allied with a good quality paint, um, in this case it's uh, Johnston's Cover Plus Emulsion, which I use all the time, uh, white and magnolia, uh, it's just fantastic paint. Um, but no, sheepskin roller, scuttle, a hand, hopefully on a pole. Uh, and I'll just show you now how quickly it is, how quick it is to roll the walls. Right, I'll just do this little area here uh, with the sheepskin roller. But as you can see, yeah, it's absolutely loaded with paint. Let's do this area now. So, just very, very slowly and gently. I mean, I'm applying no pressure at all here. Just letting the, the roller do the work. The important thing is to go very slow. So just slow and steady. That's it. That's all there is to it, and that's that'll give you a great finish. Um, and it covers in minutes, you know. It's so quick to do it this way. Uh, the foam rollers that you get and that, you see a lot of people, you know, with them and they're quite dry up paint and they're scrubbing away left, right, up and down. 
uh, but with the sheepskin, just make sure it's loaded with paint and just go very slow. Back and forth, back and forth. Um, and this whole wall will be done within two minutes. Right guys, I'm just stopping briefly there, um, just to show you the coverage you get with the sheepskin roller. Um, this, this whole area here has been done with one dip in the scuttle. So this whole wall, I reckon, you know, two dips in there uh, and the whole wall will be done. You know, just got this little bit here to do. Um, this is not a small room by any means, so you can see, see the coverage uh, that you get with that. Um, so I'll just continue now, get this all uh, finished off while it's wet. Right guys, so for anybody that's interested, this is the paint I use. Uh, I've been using it for years. Um, it's just absolutely fantastic paint. Uh, I buy it in the, the big 10 litre drums. Right guys, just a quick demo of how I cut in. Um, this is Walt C1 obviously. So first of all, I just paint a, you know, a three or four inch strip along the bottom there, leaving roughly an inch at the top there. Feather this out at the bottom. Now, this is ready to cut in now. Okay, the brushes I use for cutting in are these angled sash brushes. They come in a variety of widths, uh, one inch, one and a half, two, three, I think this is a three and a half inch. Uh, but these are excellent, you know, because they've got the angle on them, you can just cut in so, you know, it's so easy to cut in um, with these as opposed to the, the straight brush. So, there it is, that's what I use. Okay, so we've left the inch at the top, uh, brush is fully loaded. Rid of any excess. Get the brush so you can see the straight edge of the bristles and just go very slowly, well, fairly slow, fairly steady. On that edge like that. Come off and then just run back, just pull the line. That's it, cut in. Um, finish that process all the way along. Just a little bit here. All right, guys, time to floor the kitchen. Uh, I've basically just swept the area. All the skirting boards and everything are off, uh, so it's just getting ready. Um, the reason I'm doing this, I'm, I want to get all the appliances back in their place. Um, just to create some room in the living room. The living room's getting a bit crowded uh, with all this stuff. Um, so get this floor, get the appliances in, and that gives me a bit of, more room to work uh, in the property. Um, first decision to make when flooring is what way do you run the boards? Uh, normally you run them lengthwise of the room. Well, I do anyway. Um, this is the, the longest area of the room, but I think I think coming from the living room into the kitchen, I think it'll look better if the, the boards are running parallel with the, the patio doors. So I think that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm just going to run them across that way. Okay, so this underlay um, actually comes with a vapour-proof barrier here. So one end of the underlay, we've got tape, double-sided tape, and the other ends of the foil. So we'll get all this stuck down and that creates a good seal uh, for the floor. Uh, notice I'm running the join this way because the, the flooring is going this way. You always run the joins of the underlay in the opposite direction to the flooring. So I'll get on with that now. Right guys, I'm just putting down the first runs of flooring. Here's the first cut we need to make. Um, how I go about cutting this vinyl click is I use a, just using a multi-tool with a 
a wooden plastic cutting blade like this. Um, it's effective for small cuts like this. Uh, for larger cuts, uh, I use, I don't know if you can see, it's my floor cutter there. Uh, so it's, it's good for straight cuts. But for this, we'll use the multi tool. Uh, I'll show you how now. That's it. Um, being on the edge, the edges do burn slightly, and then you get some burrs. We just pick them off by hand, and all this will be covered anyway by uh, skirting board and trim. But um, that's the easiest way I find to do it. Now uh, you can do it with a Stanley knife, but it's really tough to do it. But, um, I suppose there's other ways you could do it as well. Uh, fine tooth saws, things like that. But multi tools the way to go for me. Right guys, that's the first couple in. Um, here's the bit we just cut here. Uh, so this will all be covered with skirting board anyway, so not bothered about the rough edge. And the gap, we always maintain a 5mm gap all the way around for expansion. Um, I don't put any wedges in to begin with, just so we can move the floor about. Right guys, that's the first couple of bits in. Uh, the important thing in here for me is not to line up any of the joints. Um, I always stagger the joints throughout the whole floor. So what I'll do is basically, I don't have them uh, perpendicular either. I wouldn't have a joint there and a joint here. Just stagger them all over the place. So you can see a joint there and a joint there. So my next joint might be somewhere in here. As long as there's no joint corresponding to it. I always try and do the whole floor like that. So that no single joint, if you look right along the floor, meets. Um, this gives you a more standard effect. Um, a more staggered effect, sorry. Okay, so what I use for the straight cuts for this type of flooring. It's actually a, it's a laminate floor cutter, really, uh, but I use it for vinyl plank as well. It's effective, so basically line it up. Let's put the lever down and just guillotine it. it gives you a nice straight cut. Um, it's ideal, so you can see how easy it is to, to cut this stuff. And also, there's no dust, no mess. Uh, so you can see why it's a floor and I choose all the time. Uh, it's good quality, very easy to fit, and there's no mess. Right, guys, we've got an uh, architrave for a door here that we need to cut. Uh, I'm not worried about this bit in here because there'll be a threshold uh, transition between the floor and the carpet, or the new carpet, when, once it goes down. I am worried about this, I need to cut this uh, using the multi-tool just so we can slip the, the board under and give us a neat finish. So we'll just do it again, just use the, the wood cutting blade. Uh, crap piece of flooring down here, just to rest the blade on like so and then just cut this out. Yeah, that blade wasn't actually deep enough. I can't get right to the back of the, the architrave with that, so just change blades quickly and we'll get this one. So a deeper action. So. Right, that's it cut. So now we just knock out a screwdriver. So that's the sliver I was taking off the bottom. Uh, now the, the floor I can get. The floor can be slipped under there uh, once the skirting board's on here. Right guys, there's the final transition. Well, the final architrave once we've cut it, you can see how it's slipped under now. Obviously the skirting board will be coming on here, so this will all be covered in neat as well. Uh, 
It just gives you a neat finish. The uh, threshold will obviously be in here. Once the new carpets go down. So, that's it, that's what we're looking for. I think the choice to run the boards with, with the light and running out the, the patio doors is the right, the correct decision, I think, in this instance. Sort of leads you out the, the garden. Uh, let's put the washing machine in temporarily. So there's a dishwasher to go in there, uh, the new cooker will go in there. And I just need to get all these, uh, the plants at the bottom of the units cut. Uh, they'll all need about 10 millimetres trimmed off them. <laughs> get them fitted back in and that'll create a neat finish. Um, just need to get this uh, secured down, siliconed, uh, back to the door. Uh, we'll get the skirting boards back on. Uh, we've got this area here, when it runs into the units, there's nothing you can do here really. Um, so I'll just use a grey, probably a grey silicon. So we've got this area here, and this area here as well. You can see we've got a slight gap there, it's obviously for expansion, um, as well as along here. So I'll just use a, a silicon that uh, matches the floor. So that's it. Turned out fine. Um, obviously the cooker will be going in here, but so we've just continued the flooring. I mean, you can stop it if you want to save uh, waste and floor. But I always take it right, right under. Same with the dishwasher area. Um, it's just a bit more professional, I think. Um, and if you do get any leaks there as well, it helps safeguard the subfloor. view from this side. Right, so once we get everything, all the trim and everything back on, it'll look fine. Okay, for anyone that's interested, uh, this is the type of flooring this is. Um, it's called Living Quick Step. And it's a vinyl floor. It's easy to fit. I don't think I managed to show you how I was fitting it, but it's just exactly like lamin it. Probably easier. Just angle the boards up, click them in, and, and place them down, and they, they click into place. Uh, as I say, 20 year warranty. 100% waterproof. Uh, that? Stain guard, <laughs> scratch guard. So stain proof, scratch proof. 20 year warranty, easy to fit. Uh, what more can you ask for? Actually looks quite nice as well, I like that. Um, that's my preference, I, I, I like the light grey floors. Uh, but if anyone's interested, this comes in a range, a full range of colours. Um, it's not just the grey. Uh, it's fairly expensive, I think it works out roughly about £30 per square metre, um, but as I say, 20 year guarantee, you can't, you can't ask for more. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description to this if anybody's interested, um, but I certainly recommend it. <laughs> yeah, just one other good thing about this floor that I like, it's actually, it's fairly soft underfoot, not soft, but it's, it's not as hard and harsh as laminate. Um, so I think if you live with on a flat, for instance, it's, it really dampens down the noise. Um, it's quite a warm, a warm feeling floor as well. Um, so it's just to let you know this is not like laminate. It is. It's fairly not soft, but it's, it's not as harsh as laminate as I've just just said. Uh, no, it's certainly worth, certainly worth the money. I think anyway. <laughs> 